Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Four generations of graphics cards tested, 16 games, three resolutions. Is it time to upgrade? In front of me here, I have a GTX 760, a GTX 960, a GTX 1060 6GB card, and the new RTX 2060. Most of these benchmarks are at 1080p, but I do have 1440p and 4K results for you, and I've tested 16 different games across all of these cards, dating back to 2013 on the Kepler architecture on the GTX 760. Does it still perform well today? Can you use it? Is it time to upgrade? Well, that's what this video is about today. We're gonna to take a detailed look at that. Now, before we get to the benchmarks and the RTX and all that wonderful stuff, it's worth considering where we've come from. The RTX 2060 just launched a few weeks ago. There's a couple of videos on my channel detailing a comparison of a bunch of different cards. Which one should you buy? All that has been done. Now, that's recent. Two and a half years ago, the 10 series came out and the GTX 1060 six gigabyte, which is the Pascal architecture, was a huge jump in performance over the 900 series, which came before it. And really, if you bought that two and a half years ago, you've got an amazing, great gaming performance since then. The summer of 2016, when I covered the 10 series cards on my channel for the first time, was really the first really big breakout videos that I did. The number one most viewed video on my channel is three gigabyte versus six gigabyte, which should you buy with over 850,000 views. You know what, I might link that down in the description if any of you wanna see it. it. Doesn't really matter now at this point, that video is a number of years old, but that video is still the lifetime leader on my channel. Now, Pascal Architecture was a huge leap forward and all of those cards are worth considering or were worth considering 20 series is out, so it's kind of muddled at this point. But if you go back before that, you go to the Maxwell series, the 900 series, and technically the 800, but that was OEM only and very limited. So the 900 series before that, that came out a couple of years before, and it was an iteration rather than a revolution over the 700 series, which is Kepler. It was a performance improvement, but at the time the 900 series launched, it was not revolutionary faster versus the 700 series. Now I say that because when you watch the benchmark videos today and I show you some games between these two cards, let's just say there's a very healthy performance difference between the two. But if you go back to games from three or four years ago, there wasn't. Driver optimizations, game optimizations, games now use the more modern architectures. There is now a larger difference between these cards. So at launch, the 900 was a, a nice jump, but the performance difference has grown with time. For what it's worth, the same thing will happen with the 10 and the 20 series. Whatever the performance difference is between these cards today, over time, it will slowly creep and grow larger. Now they'll both become obsolete at some point, but driver optimizations, better utilization of the new features in RTX, and I don't just mean ray tracing, tensor cores as well, the, the AI development, DLSS, none of that stuff is a big deal today. Two years from now, it may very well be, so, you know, all things considered, price to performance, if the dollar per frame per second is the same, I would take a 20 series because of that future proofing. But of course, if you get a great deal on a 10 series, and I will link to those below, I'll talk, to that about, talk about that in a minute, but if you get a great deal on a 10 series, it may even still be worth considering. That takes us all the way back to the Kepler architecture. This architecture now is six plus years old. It's actually older than that because the 600 series of cards also were the Kepler architecture. The 700 series was a refresh, so to speak. It was just an optimization. And I do have a GTX 660, but I didn't bother testing it. It's, at, at this point, you're getting back to 2012 and you're sort of, you're passing into history at that point. If you have a 600 or older series cards, or frankly, once you see the benchmarks today, you may even say this about the 700 series, if you want to play current modern 2019 games and beyond, it is time to upgrade. So I'm not even including the 600 series anymore. I've done those on my channel in the past. It's being retired. It is entirely possible that this series of uh, tests with the launch 20 cards may very well be the last time that Kepler shows up as well because, well, you wait and see for the benchmarks, they're coming. Now, both of these cards right here have two gigabytes of frame buffer. I know there are four gigabyte versions of the, of the 960. I've never actually had one, 
or if I did, I don't remember it, but I, I don't have one. Um, I don't think they were common. I think the two gigabyte was far more common, but I'm making you aware of it so you know that it is in fact the two gigabyte version. Now, obviously the three gigabyte version of the 1060 has been far more common and far more popular. I have recommended it in the past, but that's neither here nor there. We're looking at generational changes. So I had to pick one. So we're doing the six gig because both the RTX 2060 and the GTX 1060 have six gigabytes. So we have two and six gigabytes respectively. A minute ago, I mentioned links down in the video description below. There will be links to Amazon and Newegg for both the 10 and the 20 series of cards. Yes, the 10 series are still worth considering as you'll see from the benchmarks in just a minute, but only if you get the card for the right price. Most of the 1066 gig cards are going for $250 right now. That is way too much money. For the 1066 gig at 250 and an RTX 2060 at 350, that's actually the better deal. The 2060 for $100 more is more performance per frame, per second, per dollar than the 1060. On the other hand, if you find a 1066 gig card for say $150 to $180, then it actually becomes a deal. I'd buy one for something in the $150, $180 range, but that would be about the most that I would spend because anything over that, definitely anything over $200, you might as well buy a 2060. The performance is worth it. You'll grow into it. It'll last you for years. It's a great, great deal. Used, 150 or maybe a little bit less on a GTX 1060 at this point. I know many of you buy used hardware. There'll be a link to eBay down in the description below with the 1060s, both the three and the six gig. Please use those links if you like these videos. I buy most of the stuff on my channel. Those are affiliate links. They do support this channel. Using them when you shop is appreciated. Thank you. Speaking of performance, an AMD RX 580 is about the same performance as a GTX 1060, plus or minus 10%, you'll never notice that. An RX 580, which if you're gonna buy a new card today, frankly, the RX 580s are a better deal than a GTX 1060. Some people want NVIDIA cards due to either better game support, certain games just support NVIDIA better, or the NVIDIA encoding or some other features, I understand. But if you're just looking for performance for the money, an RX 580 is still a compelling value. Many of those are available new with eight gigabytes of VRAM for under $200 with free games included. I will link to those down below. If you want RTX 2060 performance level, but you, for whatever reason, either don't want an RTX card, don't want to buy an NVIDIA card, maybe you want FreeSync support, maybe you want to support Team Red, then an RX Vega 64 is going to be roughly the same performance as that RTX 2060. Now, a, a Vega 60, 56 is going to be pretty close, but at this point, unless the price is really cheap, I would get a 64 instead of a 56, because those have had uh, quite a bit of driver optimization at this point, that hasn't, and so if you really want the next couple of years of performance similar to that, I would get a Vega 64. Whether or not you can get one for a reasonable price, I'll link to those down in the description below, both to Amazon Newegg and eBay. And finally, the last thing before we get to the benchmarks, I promise they're coming, the test bench setup. These were all tested on an i9-9900K, overclocked to a fixed 5 gigahertz on all 8 core 16 threads, 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 CL14 RAM, it's the uh, Flare X from G-Skill, very good stuff. The boot SSD, for whatever difference it makes, is a Samsung 970 Pro, very, very nice drive. And then all of the benchmarks you're about to see were recorded on an external computer using a hardware capture card. The test bench doesn't even know it was being recorded, so there's no performance loss for the numbers you're about to see. MSI Afterburner was used for the real-time performance numbers you're about to see on screen that provides the CPU usage, graphics card usage, temperatures, fan speed, frame rate, etc. And then all 16 games were benchmarked with only two exceptions using the game's built-in benchmark software, uh, whatever that might be. So that's why you're going to see minimum, maximum, and average frame rates rather than 1% and 0.1% lows because trying to capture those on one minute long benchmark runs really isn't practical and frankly, it isn't very useful on runs that short. You got to play a game for longer than that to have those be useful. So that's what you're about to see. So with all that being said, let's take a look at some benchmarks, shall we? First up, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the built-in benchmark showing you four runs at the same time. MSI Afterburner real-time numbers in the upper left-hand corner of each. 
And as you can see from both the numbers and just the visual appearance right here, there is a clear and obvious performance difference between the oldest card and the newest card. Less so between the 1060 and 2060, but it's still there. In the upper left-hand corner, you see the GTX 760 simply not cutting it. In 2019, this card has simply reached end of life for modern AAA games. Doesn't make it useless, but for this, it does. To be sure, you could set it to 720p, low detail, and yes, the frame rate would improve, and it would be mostly kind of sort of playable, but then you might as well have an Xbox for all the good it would do you. It really would frankly look better on a console. So the 760 really isn't the right card in 2019 for a game like this. The 960 is okay, and you could lower the detail and lower the resolution, and it wouldn't be terrible, but it's, it's really... Even I think the GTX 960 is reaching end of life when it comes to playing modern AAA games now in 2019 such as this. The 1060, however, does have some life in front of it. I've said this before. If you have a GTX 1060, you don't have to upgrade it just yet. You can see here we're almost at 60 frames per second. Now we're into Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Remember, these are built-in benchmarks. Actual gameplay will vary more widely than these will. You'll have higher highs in various areas, lower lows, etc. But it is about 60 frames per second, 1080p high detail. The RTX 2060 is way above that, nearly 100 frames per second. Not double the performance, but it's actually close, all things considered. Now, if you look at the rest of the uh, features there, you'll see that the VRAM usage on the top two cards is, of course, limited to two gigabytes of VRAM, which is part of the issue there. Lowering texture detail would help a bit, but considering how much VRAM modern games want to use, even if you lowered it to low, you're still needing two gigs of VRAM, and that's just going to keep going up. Looking at the bottom two 6 gig cards, you can see we're between 4.5 and 5 gigabytes of VRAM, respectively. In fact, an interesting thing here, notice the GTX 760 in the upper left-hand corner isn't even rendering the fog correctly. These are all set to the same detail settings, but the card just can't handle it. It's, it's That architecture is now old enough. Trying to run Shadow of the Tomb Raider on a, G, on a GTX 760, to be completely blunt, is the wrong plan. One interesting thing you might note is that the CPU usage on the RTX 2060 is higher than on the GTX 1060. Take a look at line three on the bottom two runs. We have substantially higher CPU usage because the frame rate is higher. The higher the frame rate you're running, the more powerful the graphics card you have, the more CPU that you need. If we were to hinder the RTX 2060 with an older, slower CPU, slower clock rate, fewer cores, etc., then it wouldn't run quite this quickly. Or if it wasn't overclocked, it would be a little bit slower, although the i9 would still run at 4.7, even if it wasn't overclocked, this is not a huge overclock. But that usage is much higher. So you need a better CPU for the faster graphics cards. One of the uh, tests and benchmarks I plan to do is how does graphics cards scale with CPU? I don't know that I'll do it with an RTX 2060. I might do it with an RTX 2080. Uh, test an i3, i5, i7, and a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5, and Ryzen 7 just to demonstrate this to show where it falls off. But it does, and it should be blatantly, clearly obvious to you, just looking at the numbers here, how much more CPU you need to run at 100 frames per second versus 60, which is what the GTX 1060 is doing. Fun fact, the i9 is bored with a GTX 760 only using 7 to 9% of the CPU power, but of course that should surprise nobody. I don't expect anyone in the world would put a GTX 760 or even a 960 on an i9 9900K. Okay, someone somewhere would, but I that's not normal, and I would hope that most of you know that that's not reasonable. Now here we have Strange Brigade, and what is strange about this is that it actually performs reasonably well on the older cards. This is a new game, and the fact that it is playing reasonably well on the older cards is remarkable. We are getting 30 to 60 frames per second on those two cards, obviously towards the higher end of that spectrum on a GTX 960, but if you were to set this to medium detail, a 960 could play Strange Brigade just fine. It wouldn't be ideal, but it would. And no, you don't need an i9 to play Strange Brigade. 
If anything, this just goes to show that game selection is very important when it comes to how much graphics card you need to play at any given resolution, any given detail setting. Now the green bars here are the RTX 2060, spectacular 1080p high detail gaming performance. This right here is why I say that this is the ideal 1080p card to buy today if you want a 1080p card for the next three years, because these numbers won't hold. If the games that come out over the next three years, these numbers will slow down to where the GTX 1060 is today. It is true that a GTX 1060 today will play AAA games at 1080p just fine for a very short period of time from this point going forward. The card is two and a half years old, and so if you're expecting to buy it today and continue to play games at 1080p for the next three years, I think you're going to be disappointed because three years from now, it's going to be where the 960 is. You're going to be down at the 30 frame per second level rather than the 60 frame per second level. And so if you already own one, you don't have to upgrade today, but I wouldn't go out and buy one today unless it's really cheap for 1080p gaming. What is there even to say about the 960 and 760? I'm including them here in this particular chart, if only to point out that their day has passed, especially the 760. I was not originally going to include it, but I decided to go ahead and show the bracket ends. Where's the bottom end of the performance? How much difference is there really? And the truth is there really is a lot of difference. The 760 for modern AAA games is now obsolete. It really is an inappropriate card to use for this sort of thing. What about minimum frame rates? Looking at minimum frame rates in Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the RTX 2060 actually did dip below 60 frames per second. Please remember these are built-in benchmarks. The actual game will have dips below this, and that's why I think the RTX 2060 is where it's at at this point if you're trying to do 1080p. Now, the GTX 1060 held pretty well at 45, 51, and 65, but again, it's at the tail end of its life for sort of a mid-range premier gaming card. And then the 960 and 760, well, let's just be honest, the numbers speak for themselves. I'm including max frame rate simply for additional detail because some people like to see these numbers. I don't think they're nearly as important as the average and minimum, but they're here if you're interested in seeing them. So that was three different games showing you all four on screen at the same time with the MSI Afterburner real-time numbers. Although frankly, on a couple of those, you don't need the real-time frame rates to tell the difference, especially games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey and Shadow of the Tomb Raider. No offense, NVIDIA, but I do believe it's time to put the GTX 760 out to pasture if you're trying to play current modern games like that. It was a good card in its day, but that day is not today. This does not, however, mean you cannot play games on this card. You just can't play the latest and greatest big budget games. Can you play free-to-play games? Can you play older AAA games? Absolutely. You can play games that were designed for this hardware in its era, or perhaps modern, uh, more casual games that aren't as demanding. But those kind of games, no, you really can't. Even the 960, as nice as it is, is starting to pass into the more casual nature, the older game playing mode. Would I want to play Shadow of the Tomb Raider or Assassin's Creed Odyssey on a 960? Absolutely not. You could set it to medium detail, you could set it to 900p instead of 7 to 1080p, but frankly, I would consider a GTX 1060 the minimum for new modern release AAA games in 2019. Even then, it's not top of the heap. It's still sort of at the end of its life. It's two and a half years old. You have maybe another year of life left in it, and then it's going to start falling off. Over the next year or two, the 1060 is going to start turning into what the 960 is today. Not unplayable, but yeah. And then, of course, if you buy an RTX 2060, it's spectacular. What do you expect? It's a brand new card. Now, for the rest of these game tests, the 760 is not on them, just to give you a heads up. After testing it on those three games, I took a look at the performance and I thought, you know, it'll play GTA 5 just fine. It'll play Far Cry 3 just fine. But Far Cry 5, Far Cry 6, yeah, no, there's no point. If you want to play the latest and greatest games, it's time to upgrade. So that's being left aside, and the rest of the benchmarks you're about to see are just going to be from the 960 on up.
The next chart that I want to show you is World of Tanks and Final Fantasy XV. The benchmarks provided by each company give you a total score rather than a frame rate number. These are free to download. You don't have to own the games or play the games in order to see them. Download the benchmarks. Try it on your own machine. Higher is better. I did not include the 760 here simply because, well, frankly, I think that the previous chart told the story. There was no need to spend the additional time to test it because it just it doesn't perform very well in 2019 it's time to upgrade if you have a 760 but here you can see the performance progression between the 960 1060 and 2060 and to be completely blunt you get what you pay for you want more performance spend some more money you don't need a 2060 to play these games a 1060 is certainly fine but it certainly makes for a very nice experience this group of five games here demonstrates why the GTX 1060 remains a good 1080p card and has been for the past 2.5 years that it has been out. GTA 5, Dawn of War 3, F1 2017, Forza Horizon 4, and Forza Motorsport 7 all run at 100 plus frames per second average on the 1060. But these games are now aging. Several of these games are quite old. GTA V is several years old at this point, so I would fully expect it to run very, very well. In fact, it plays just fine on a GTX 960 at 1080p high detail. But again, if you want to play the next generation of games not released yet, do you want to buy a card today that you just have to replace in a year or that you can keep for several years? That's why I think that if you're buying new, go ahead and step up to the plate and buy a better card. Unless, of course, you get a great deal either on a new old stock card or even a used one. If somebody offers you a GTX 1060 for $100, well, you'd be crazy not to take it. But I certainly wouldn't pay the $200 to $250 they're currently going for based upon these performance spreads. Here is the minimum frame rate, which really only applies to four of these five games. GTA 5 runs so fast that its minimum frame rate is broken on the 2060. That's why it's down at 10. I actually ran that several times. It's just the game. It's an aging game, so ignore that particular number. I'm including it for the sake of accuracy and completeness. I'm, it, I ran it multiple times and it came up. Otherwise, you can see the minimum frame rates, frankly, are fine on a 1060. And once again, for the sake of completeness, here are the max frame rates on the five games. Five more games tested. Far Cry 5 runs at 78 frames per second, 1080p high detail on a 1060. That's very good, and that game is completely playable on that card. It's rough on a 960. I wouldn't try to play Far Cry 5 on a 960 at this point. You're really due for an upgrade. But Far Cry 6 will not. I'm willing to bet that Far Cry 6 will need the 2060, which is, again, why I come back to the three-year future-proofing by the 2060 to be able to play games for the next several years. Mankind Divided, 64. It runs, but it's going to dip down in busy areas. For Honor is very good performance, over 100 frames per second on the 1060. Ghost Recon Wildlands, to run at 100 frames per second, requires an RTX 2060 at 1080p high. This is not very high. This is not ultra. This is just high detail. Now, Rainbow Six Siege is a different one because that's more of an esports title. A lot of Twitch streamers play that game. If you want to play at 144 frames per second, you can do that on a 1060 in terms of averages. But this is the built-in benchmark. I've seen this game played. I have played it. I'm not very good at it. Those frame rates don't hold in the actual game themselves. So if you're a super competitive player or you have one of the new 240 hertz monitors, then maybe a 2060 does make sense for 1080p. Minimum frame rates, actually not that bad. Built-in benchmarks generally don't do too bad here. You can see Far Cry 5, the numbers don't dip too much. Ghost Recon, they come down a bit. Rainbow Six Siege sees one of the largest drops. We're down to only 174 frames per second minimum on the 2060. So yeah, if you want a minimum frame rate of 144 frames per second and you're a serious competitive gamer, there you go. Finally, max frame rates, 201 frames per second in For Honor, 349 frames per second in Rainbow Six Siege. For you ultra-competitive players out there, it certainly is a beast. That was a lot of benchmarks. Now, some of you are going to look at those benchmarks results and say, why would anybody buy an RTX 2060? The 1060 did just fine. 
Yes, it did, but look at the age of some of those games. The second set of games that I showed you, such as Far Cry 5, are newer and run slower, but they are absolutely still playable on a 1060. Will Far Cry 6 be just as playable? Who knows? My Magic 8 Ball is in the shop, but I'm willing to bet that over the next year or two, this is going to fall off and become more like the 960 is, which I... Yes, you can play GTA 5, you can play Rainbow Six Siege, you can play a number of those games on there, but several of the games I showed you are now several years old, so of course they play on that. But I hope that this gives you an idea of what to expect at 1080p throughout the generations and why if you're looking at a new card today and you want it to last you three plus years, a 1060 is not it. A 2060 is at least the minimum that I would want to buy. Now, if you already own a 1060, should you rush out and buy a 2060? Probably not. You can get away with this for another year or two, especially if you don't have to play every brand new game. If, you're, if, you, if you don't buy every new launch title that comes out every three weeks, you can probably get away with it. However, I am willing to bet that a lot of people didn't expect two and a half years to pass between the 10 series and the 20 series. Will we get a 30 series 12 or 18 months from now, or will it take another two and a half years to see another generation of cards? I have absolutely no idea. If another generation of cards come out, comes out in a year or two, keep this for a year or two and wait and just buy a 30 series and you'll be good to go. But if you're still sitting here two years from now and there's no 30 series in sight and your aging 10 series is getting old, in all likelihood, the 20 series is not going to have dropped in price appreciably unless we get real competition from AMD, in which case you'll be kicking yourself and saying, gee, why didn't I just buy a 20 series when they launched? Because frankly, that's kind of how the 10 series went. The 10 series were a great deal at launch and you got two and a half years of amazing game performance before we saw a new series of cards. I promised you at the beginning of this video that we'd have 1440p and 4K gaming results. Now we're going to take a look at those. However, the 960 is being pushed aside because it has a two gigabyte frame buffer. And seriously, in 2019, yeah, we're totally not going to be playing games at 1440p and 4K with two gigabytes of VRAM. You can, interestingly enough, a couple of these games will play at least at 1440p, but if that's really what you're doing, it's absolutely time to upgrade in my opinion. Anyway, let's take a look at those results. Cranking the resolutions up, how well do the top two cards run 1440p and 4K relative to 1080p? Now, I'm only including the 6 gig cards here because, frankly, frame buffers, it doesn't make any sense otherwise. 51 frames per second average at 4K high detail on an RTX 2060. Now, that's not a, an average of 60 frames per second, but the game is, in fact, quite playable at 4K at high detail. At 1440p, it averages 100 frames per second. So if you have a 100 hertz 1440p monitor, yeah, a 2060 will do it. I think you should buy more because this game's not new, but you certainly could do it. A 1060, on the other hand, kind of falls off there. 34 frames per second at 4K, that's a bit rough. Now, at 1440p, if you have a 1440p 60Hz monitor, then a 1060 is just fine. High-performance driving games need higher frame rates, or at least higher minimums, if you want really good performance. The, the twitchiness and the responsiveness is kind of like first-person shooters like Rainbow Six Siege, which we'll get to in just a minute. 93 frames per second average on a 1060 at 1440p, 49 frames per second average at 4K. Now that's still playable at 4K, but it's not going to be butter, butter smooth. The 2060 at 4K is not only gorgeous, but also very butter smooth. So yes, an RTX 2060 is a viable 4K gaming card if you're not trying to play Assassin's Creed Odyssey at 4K. For that, a 2080 Ti is not crazy. But if you're not trying to do that or Shadow of the Tomb Raider, yeah, both of these cards in their own respects are very viable 1440p and 4K cards, depending upon what you play. That brings us to Rainbow Six Siege. Now, if you are a hyper-competitive Siege player, I doubt you're playing at 4K. I'm willing to bet most super competitive Siege players have a 1080p at most with a high refresh rate monitor. But if you're more interested in casual play or you want the beauty of higher resolutions, 103 frames per second on an RTX 2060 is not bad at 4K. 
188 frames per second at 1440p versus 108 on a 1060. How much frame rates do you want? Well, there are plenty of 144 hertz 1440p monitors on the market for not too much money. So an RTX 2060 will give you the performance to play Siege at or above 144 frames per second at 1440p for a reasonable price. Last but certainly not least, I went ahead and tested World of Tanks and Final Fantasy XV. Again, these are built-in benchmarks. They're standalone benchmarks, I should say. You can download them and test them yourself, see your relative performance compared to these numbers. They're not frame rates. Let me know in the comment section below whether or not you like World of Tanks and Final Fantasy XV included. They're not too hard to run. They're fairly quick to put the numbers up, but they don't give me a frame rate number. They just give me a score. Let me know if you want them. Thank you all so much for watching this. This was a lot of work to put together. I hope you appreciate all this testing. I actually did some more testing in addition to this in order to find the boundary boxes and where everything would work. I, I did do a little bit of testing on some other games on the 960. I just wanted to see what was playable and what wasn't, but since I didn't do that testing on all of them, I couldn't include it. Whenever you do these types of videos, it always helps to know where the outer boundaries are to get an idea of where the performance is. What I will say is this, this is a general guide. If you're sitting there staring at your computer screen right now, ready to go down to the comments below and angrily type out, I play XYZ game at 1440p without a problem on my GTX 760 tech, you're crazy, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, fine. Do you play a casual or free to play game or something that's not very graphically demanding at 1440p on your six year old graphics card? I'm sure it works just fine. These are general guidelines and I'm only showing you the results from the games that I tested. There will always be exceptions to these rules. World of Tanks will certainly play on a GTX 760. It will play much nicer on a 960. And of course it's beautiful and powerful and wonderful on the higher end cards. But you don't need these higher end cards to play World of Tanks or War Thunder or League of Legends or Dota 2 or Overwatch. Overwatch at 1440p does not require an RTX 2060. Maybe at 4K, but frankly, Overwatch will play fine on a GTX 960. I haven't tested it, but I'm willing to bet Overwatch plays just fine on that at 1440p at medium detail. It's just worth noting that as time goes on, even existing games do get graphical upgrades. World of Tanks recently got a big update in their big 1.0 update. They changed the game engine. They added a lot of graphic fidelity to it. That's the uh, Uncore built uh, benchmark, the standalone benchmark that I showed you in this video. So what did run nicely on the older SD clients may not run nicely today as game engines get updated, as new effects, new graphics, new enhancements gets added, especially to these online games that are always in development. Use what you got, enjoy what you have, play the games that you can, but just don't be surprised when Assassin's Creed Odyssey doesn't play on a six-year-old video card very well. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you love it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas, queries, posers, put those in the comment section below. I don't respond to them all, but I do read them all, and I do appreciate you leaving your thoughts, feedback, and comments. Finally, links in the video description. I buy most of the stuff that I review. Those are affiliate links. They support the channel. It is a wonderful way to support at no extra cost to you. Use those when buying your shiny new graphics card or whatever else you may be buying. I would certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see all of you next time.